Amen. So we're talking about the fool or foolishness. I'm going to say fool and foolishness a lot this morning. So you can keep track, and at the end, you get a prize. And the prize is a high five. Anyway, um, we're talking about the fool. And when I think of fool or foolishness, just what comes to my head is like this sort of silly light, like somebody's acting just like a fool. Somebody's doing something dumb, and it's foolish. It's kind of silly, kind of light. And so the first story that popped in my head, I've told this story here before a couple of years ago, but this has to do with me and Ricky, the geniuses that we are, okay? So a while ago when we lived here, we were doing some work to our house, and we wanted to do a a gravel sort of section in our backyard, the fire pit, gravel thing. So we got, like, I overestimated by about 100% on how much gravel we needed. (laughs) Had to do the math quick in my head. Um, so we, anyway, we do the whole sort of fire pit in the backyard gravel, and we have just a mound of it left over. And so they're already laughing because they, okay. So we have like a mound of this left over. So we're like, we'll do our whole front flower bed as well. We do the whole thing. We still have like this massive pile of gravel in our driveway. And we just don't know what to do with it. So one day Ricky calls me. He's like, hey, we've got a little gravel fire pit in our backyard. Can we come get some of your gravel? We need some more. It's getting a little, you know, bare or whatever. So we need some more gravel. Sure. Come over, get the gravel. At this point, Ricky and I live very close to each other. It's my house. You drive down the street, around the corner, down the street, his house, okay? So we're close. We get there, and we've not thought what we're going to do yet. So we, we load up a wheelbarrow to over the limit of what you should load a wheelbarrow to of gravel, okay? And then we're like, we, we know what to do. Put our heads together, dumb and dumber here, and... What we do is we open their hatchback. Rachel drives. We sat on the back of the car. He held one arm of wheelbarrow. I held the other. And we drove down the street, around the corner, and down his street like that, okay? It took all of 0.2 seconds to go, this is the dumbest idea we've ever had. And we did it. If you don't believe in miracles, let me tell you, okay? Believe, okay? Because there were so many times where we almost lost it. It was the worst idea. All the, like, there's never been more cars on my street than there was that evening. <laughs> like, just driving by us, thinking, surely, what foolish people would do such a thing? But anyway, we got it. We did it. So I think it was a good idea. Um, that's, when I, that's what I think of with foolishness. Sort of this, like, that's just silly. That's dumb, you know? But the, the idea that we're going to look at here in the Bible when it comes to foolishness is not silly, That's the wrong kind of fool or foolishness to be thinking about. This is a serious, dangerous sort of life to live. This foolish person. The Hebrew word, the idea behind it is this person who just consistently makes bad choices. This sort of blatant disregard for what God has called us to. The the antithesis of wisdom. Somebody somebody said antithesis this morning. I said I'd put it in my message, so I just did it. But th- this exact opposite of what we're supposed to do, it's a dangerous and it's a real thing. So let's not think about it as something silly, but we're going to take these warnings that the, the book of Proverbs and some other places in the Bible give us about foolishness, because it's a serious thing. And Ricky mentioned this a bit last week, that we all have choices in our life. There's a choice that we need to make. There's a good choice and there's, there's bad choices. And life's complicated and it's hard to figure out what is what. And so we need to, some help making these decisions. And where Ricky used Twilight to give this example, I'm going to use the book of Deuteronomy from the Bible. Okay? So that tells you everything you need to know about us. But I want us to look at Uh, There's a moment in in the book of Deuteronomy. So to give you some backstory before we get to this story, this moment, um, God's people, the Israelites, were enslaved in Egypt. God sends Moses, this man of God who's going to rescue God's people, bring them out of Egypt, out of slavery. God performs miracles. He parts the Red Sea. This whole nation of people escape. And then they spend 40 years in the wilderness before they enter into the promised land. And the reason that it's, it, it takes 40 years is because they're acting like a bunch of fools, these people, okay? They keep, they're consistently making bad choices, Israel. And so they finally get to this spot where they're about to enter into the promised land 40 years later. And Moses gives this really big speech that basically is the entirety of the book of Deuteronomy. The speech to the people of Israel before they enter in. And the heart of the speech is just make better choices. 
Like, do not do what the, the, the last generation did where they wandered and they made bad choices, but make good choices. And this is just a little snippet from this speech in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. It says, today I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. So it's this call, we've got choices There's been choices laid before us, life, death, blessings, curses. And it's hard to know the difference at times. And so we need to, oh, that we would choose life, choose the right choice. The fool is somebody who consistently makes the wrong choice. And so we're going to look at the warnings and look at what the, uh, the book of Proverbs, what the Bible tells us about foolishness or being the fool. So two ideas that we're going to look at, two roads we're going to go down. The first road is we're going to look at the realities in the book of Proverbs and elsewhere in the Bible that warns us about spending time with foolish people and warns us about entertaining foolish thoughts. So we're going to look at people and look at thoughts. Where do we spend our time? What do we think about? Who do we spend our time with? The second road that we're going to look at is we're going to sort of take the Bible and we're going to look at ourselves and we're going to ask the question, where's there foolishness in me? Where is foolishness starting to sprout in my life? Where do I need God to come in and do something because there's foolishness happening in my heart? That's what we're going to do and look at in our time together. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about being careful, being warned, beware foolish people and foolish thoughts. Who do we allow to have input into our lives? What do we entertain in our minds? A quick little note here before we just go into this. There's a tension that we need to balance, and I love when the Bible gives us these tensions, these two things that we need to kind of hold together, because our world, I think, wants us to go, it's this or that. You're here or you're there. And the Bible and Jesus lives in a very different world that says a lot of things we hold in tension with each other. So if you're like me, I was reading this, and I'm like, how awesome is it that the Bible is telling me don't hang out with foolish people, you know? That's, I have a whole list of people I'll never see again, you know? And I'm, I'm, all these people I'm gonna unfriend or whatever, it's like, that's awesome. Thanks, Bible, for telling me to do that. Say, so we're gonna hold attention here, because that's true, but I want us to look at some verses that are gonna help us, I think, balance this, because we're not just trying to isolate from people or cut people out of our lives or to determine ourselves who's foolish and who's not so that we know who to hang out with and who not to hang out with. That's not the point of this. So the first thing, the first verse I want us to look at is Matthew chapter five, verse 16. Really simple, it just says, in the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. There's this call that, hey, everybody, all people, are supp- we're supposed to, be in relationship with all different kinds of people. And the goal there is that people would see God moving and working in our life. So it's not saying to isolate or cut yourself off from people, but you've got things to share. You've got a light that you need to shine to all people. Okay, so that's the first thing. And then Jesus himself in the book of Mark gives this great response. He's at a, a person's house that he's not supposed to be at, right? Somebody that others considered a fool. And they're, they're talking about it, and they're sort of shaming him for it. And this is what he says in Mark 2, 17. When Jesus heard this, he told them, healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I've come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. So here's Jesus going, we're, we're not trying to just figure out who are the wise people, and that's all we're going to hang out with. We're not trying to cut people out of our lives. So I want us to hold some tension together here between we need to make sure that we're being people that Jesus has called us out into the world to all people and we have relationships with all kinds of people in our life. And I'm not saying for a a moment that we cut people and we're not gonna talk to people anymore. We're not gonna do that. But I want us to hold the flip side as well where the Bible gives us serious warnings about who we spend our time with and what people we allow to have input and say into our life, because it's a big deal, and what thoughts we entertain as we follow Jesus. So we'll talk about people first. So when I was driving, one of the days that we were driving, I was listening to an audio book, and it's called The Deeply Formed Life. It's awesome, by a pastor named Rich Velotis. Go read it, or listen to it. He's got a cool voice, Um, which is nice. When some people audio books, some people's voices, you're like, I can't listen to this for hours, but this guy was cool. Um, Anyway, he was talking about this, giving an an example, and I was like, that's perfect for this. And so he's talking about the redwood trees, like the San Francisco area, these massive, I've never been to see them, but these massive trees, they're just humongous. And they they were talking about the root system of these trees. He said the roots grow outwards hundreds of feet all around the tree, 
and they get plugged into all the other roots of all the other trees. And his point was that the health of an individual tree is determined by the health of all the other trees. So the health of one tree is determined by how healthy everything else is around it. And so that is, I think, very true of us as human beings. When we are plugged into good people, wise people, good places, we're getting good advice, that's, we're healthy because of that. But the flip side is true. When we're plugged into bad relationships, bad choices, bad decisions, that is unhealthy for us. Our, our, our health is dependent on and determined by the health of the people that we are plugged into. So we need to be really mindful about who we're plugged into. What people give input into your life? What people do you go to for advice? What do they say? Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20 says it really simply. Walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. So we need to be really mindful and careful about, okay, where am I spending my time? Who do I allow to speak into my life? And I want us to take a second, and we talked this morning when we prayed before the service, that this is a hard thing to do, what I'm about to ask us to do. Because there's people in our life that we love, like dearly. And I'm going to ask us to sort of take inventory and think about our relationships. Think about your friends, think about coworkers, think about whoever in your life. And ask the question, okay, when I'm with them, do they push me to look more like Jesus or less like Jesus? When I'm with these people, does the the advice they give me, does it push me towards holiness or just towards what I want to do? Are people saying what I want them to say or are people saying what needs to be said? We need to be really mindful about who we spend time with. We want to look more like Jesus, and we need people in our life that we're plugged into that help us do that. And the, the book of Proverbs warns us about what happens when we spend time with foolish people. It has an effect on us when we're plugged into them. We need to look more like Jesus. That's the goal. There's a quote that I have written here, and I, I thought of it as I was writing this, so I wrote it down. And the quote is, show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. Great quote, right? It's, it's true. And show me your friends, I'll show you your future. This idea that who you spend time with is what you start to look like. So who are you spending time with? And what sort of is interesting about this is the person that I know who said this is not in a good place at all. And I think it's largely because of the people that this person was having around him and what they were saying and the advice that he was being given from these people. And so it sort of made me chuckle in a weird way that here's this quote, and it's true, and I've seen it work in the wrong way, and I've seen it work in the right way. Where we spend our time, who we allow to speak into our life is a big deal. So think about people in your life. Think about those things, because it's a big deal. We want to be healthy people. We want to make the right choices. We want to look more like Jesus. We want to look more holy. We want want to move forward in our life, and the reality is there's people in our life that are making the wrong choices and that are contributing to foolishness, and we need to be careful about who those people are. And I'm not saying, like, again, to cut these people out, but whose words do you give weight to and whose not so much? There are people in my life that I love that when they give advice, it goes in one ear, out the other. Because I just know that's not, I don't need to listen to you. You're not going to make the right choices. You're not calling me towards holiness or to to look more like Jesus. This is just, it's not the right thing that I need. They're in my life. I love them, but I give less weight to their words. So we need to think about this. And it's a, it's a, it might be a long, challenging process to really take inventory. What, when I go to these people for advice, what do they tell me to do? Is it always what I want them to tell me to do? Does it always happen to be what I want to do? Think about that. Is it look, causing me to look more like Jesus or less like Jesus? So be careful about who you spend time with, who you allow in your world. The second thing is be careful about what thoughts you allow into your mind. There's foolish thoughts that come into our mind all the time. What we think about so determines who we are and what we do. The, the, the thoughts we allow into our brain drive who we are and what we do. Thoughts are incredibly powerful. I was thinking about the very beginning of the Bible. Satan just plants a thought in Adam and Eve's minds. What, what if God's not giving you the whole truth? What if there's some more to this that he's kind of holding back? What if he's not? What if, there's, what if you could have more? Just a simple thought that gets planted, and then it takes root, and that thought turns into actions and is destructive. Thoughts take root in our life, and then that becomes what we do. So we need to be very careful and mindful about the thoughts that we allow 
into our mind because those things drive who we are and what we do. And foolish thoughts. We live in a world, a million and one things are being said to us and shown to us every single day. Social media, news, work, advertisements, everything. Constantly bombarding us. And what those things are trying to do is tell you what to think or how to think. What to think about. You should think like this. About this topic, you should think this way. All of this stuff, lots of it is foolishness. It's not thinking about it the right way. And it's telling us what to think or how to think about these things. So we need to be really careful. What thoughts do we entertain? What thoughts do we allow into our mind? We need to be careful about who we spend time with and what we think about. The scriptures, they give us a great tool for this. Awesome. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Other, other uh, versions say we take every thought captive. Every thought that pops into our minds, we take it captive and we hold it under the light of Jesus and Scripture and we look at it. Is this good? Is this right? Is this helping me? Is this a good thing to think about? Is this contributing to, to the transformation in my life to look more like Jesus? Or is it the opposite? Is it hindering? Is it a negative thought? Is it wrong? So we hold every thought captive and we put it under the light of Jesus and Scripture. And we ask the question, is this good? Is this the right thing to be thinking about? Because what I think about determines what I do and who I am. Thoughts are incredibly powerful. Take every single thought captive, hold it under the light of Scripture. Is it helping me? Is it wise? Right? I think about Jesus. He regularly, we see in the Gospels, goes off by himself all the time and prays. It's really interesting. In the book of Mark, we see Jesus starts sort of ministry. He goes 40 days immediately after that and fasts and spends time with God for 40 days. And the way Mark describes it, it goes 40 days. He does one day of ministry and then immediately goes to his disciples. Hey, we need to get out of here for a second and go be alone. It's like one day on the job. And he's like, we got we to gotta get out for a second and go just be alone. You know what I mean? After 40 days of being alone. And that is incredibly powerful. I think Jesus is doing that for a lot of reasons. One of them, I think, is because Jesus was a human being like we are human beings. And I think he needed to clear his head. There's all this stuff. Jesus is a celebrity. People constantly want things from him. People don't like him. People love him. People challenge him. All these things. And I think Jesus needed to get away for a second to clear his head and refocus. Okay, I need to think about the right things. I need to make sure that my thought life, my inner life with God is healthy and in a good place. It's one of the things the book I've been listening to is talking about so much is the inner life, right? What, we're, what our thoughts and our heart, like, we can look great on the outside and be doing all sorts of wonderful things, but this, if this is not right, what we're thinking about, then we cannot be healthy people. So Jesus made it a regular practice to go away and sit with God and focus and make sure he's thinking about the right things. So what are the right things to think about? Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. I love this encouragement in the Bible. Think about things. Think about good things, admirable things, right things, honorable. Think about good things. I think they know, right? This, it's fascinating about the Bible. So long ago, they understood all of this, that what we think about so drives and affects who we are. So think about the right things. Hold every thought captive. Hold it under the light of Jesus. Is this right? Is this good? Think about good things. That's the encouragement from Scripture and from Proverbs that we do. So the first thing is we need to be careful about who we allow to have input into our life. There are foolish people in our world. Everybody has them. It's just a reality of life. We need to be careful about who those people are and what we allow them to speak into our life and make sure that we are plugged in and into a great root system with healthy people so we can be healthy. And we also need to be careful about what thoughts we allow into our mind. What do we feed? What do we entertain in our thought life? Such a big deal about following Jesus. And something that I think doesn't get talked about tons. I think being talked about more, which is really good, what's happening in here? in my thoughts. So be careful about the people in your life and the thoughts that you allow in your mind. So the second thing that we're going to jump into um, for the second half here is I want us to, to, I think the Bible is best used not necessarily as a lens to look at everybody else through, but as a mirror to look at ourselves. So we're going to turn the Bible in for a second. We're going to ask the really scary question, okay, where's their foolishness in me? 
It's one thing to look at other people and go, okay, yeah, there's foolishness and I need to be careful, but where's their foolishness in my heart? Where do I need to be honest and open up to God and say, I've got something growing in here and it's not good and I need you to come and rip it out. We need to be honest in this moment. And so we're gonna look at ourselves for a second and we're gonna look at um, three ideas, three what I'm just calling indicators of foolishness. There's lots and I would encourage you to go read Proverbs 26 when you go home. We're gonna look at a few verses out of there. There's lots of things that you can learn in there, but I've pulled three out that I think are good for us and important that we're gonna look at. Three indicators of foolishness that I see from the book of Proverbs, chapter 26. So, number one, the indicator of foolishness that I found or the, that I grabbed is the words that we use. The words that we use. Proverbs chapter 26, uh, 18 and 19. Just as damaging as a madman shooting a deadly weapon is somebody who lies to a friend and then says, I was only joking. Now, this verse has been slapping me in the face for weeks, okay? And I would encourage you again, read it in other translations because you get all sorts of different aspects of this verse. The heart of this is, it is so damaging to throw around weighty words, but just say, I'm only, it's just a joke. I'm just kidding. Don't take it so personal. Don't take it so seriously. I mean, I'm being lighthearted over here. Words have such an incredible weight and we throw words around all the time and there's this incredible warning for us. It is damaging to just throw around words But then it was just a joke though. We need to be really careful about what we say because what could be a joke in our heart is hurting somebody. And that's a big deal. I was thinking about this week, uh, there's a a story that I was reminded of where um, I had this friend, we'd not seen each other in a while and I didn't really think much about it. And then one night he just called me, sort of out of the blue. And he was like, hey, you said this thing and it, it really hurt me. And we've not really been hanging out. And that's kind of the reason why, because it hurt. And my immediate response out of my mouth was, I was just a joke, dude. I was joking. And I didn't realize, okay, it hurts people, the words that we use. There's weight to our words. I think an indicator of foolishness is when we don't think about that. When we're just going to start tossing words around about people in our life, about people not in our life. And we put things on social media about people that we don't even know. And then they say, oh, it's just a joke. It's just, it's humor, you know? I'm just joking. It was not serious. It's hurtful. It's a big deal. We I mean, think about what we're saying, what we're posting, what we're contributing into the world when it comes to our words. It's damaging and dangerous to just throw words around and say, I'm only kidding. It's just a joke. So that's my first indicator of foolishness popping up in my own life. What am I saying? How much weight do I realize my words have? And how careful am I with what I say? When do, am I listening to wisdom and going, when should I say something? When should I not say something? Be careful about the words that we use. That's number one. Number two, an indicator of foolishness is being stuck in our ways. I think it's an indicator of foolishness. This verse we're looking at, it's become top five favorite verses for me, Okay. It's awesome. And when you read it, you're just going to love the Bible so much, okay? So this is Proverbs chapter 26, verse 4 and verse 5. Here we go. Don't answer the foolish arguments of fools or you will become as foolish as they are. Verse 5. Be sure to answer the foolish arguments of fools or they will become wise in their own estimation. Awesome. Cool. Cool. I got it. Thanks. I see you, Bible, you know? Okay. Don't answer a fool. Be sure to answer a fool, okay? Okay. All right. Okay, I think why this is in here and why I love this. We talked about tensions earlier. I think what's happening here is there's two kinds of people. There's the kind of person that always throws in their two cents about everything. Constantly, well, you said this. Okay, I'm going to say this. I'm going to challenge it. I'm going to throw it in. There's the other person who never says anything, okay? Always just lets somebody say whatever and that's really interesting or whatever and doesn't say something. So there's those two kinds of people, okay? And I think what the, this is getting at in the immediate context is we need wisdom to figure out when to do what. Yeah. Okay, when do I say something? When is it worth it to jump in and say something? And then I need wisdom to go, okay, this is not that moment, and I'm not going to say something. I'm going to let them talk. I'm going to nod. I'm going to smile or whatever. We need wisdom to figure out what thing do I do. I think we would love to have a one-size-fits-all answer to everything, and we would get stuck. Now, this is the immediate context of this verse, right, is be careful, you know, it's 
when you jump into an argument or when you don't or when you correct somebody or when you shouldn't. But I think it's true across the board in our life that there are not ever one size fits all answers. And we, I think, have a temptation and it's easy to get stuck. This is how I always respond. This is how I always think about this situation. When somebody brings this up, this is what I always say. I think it's really uh, an indicator of foolishness when we are stuck, when we only do one thing. Because the Bible has tensions all over the place. There's grace and there's truth. There's mercy and there's justice. There's don't say something and there's say something. So we need to be people who approach every situation prayerfully and go, what do I do this time? How do I respond in this situation? It may look the same on the surface, but there's all sorts of factors going on. Is this a time where I'm supposed to say something or not say something? And I think this is one of the reasons I I love this. I think this is why Jesus says, follow me, not accept me. We should accept Jesus, believe in him. We're supposed to follow him. When he gets disciples, he says, follow me. Because we're going on a journey and life is complicated. And you're going to approach one situation and you're going to do this. And then you're going to approach a situation that looks exactly the same to you, but you cannot do that same thing again. Ugh. We need to follow Jesus desperately. Seek after him. Because we're going to get into a situation and go, okay, this is what I would normally do, but you should not do that this time. So when do I say something? When do I not say something? I think about with kids, right? It's like some people, I think, always, they come down hard on their kids. And then some people are just like, you do whatever you want, right? But we approach those situations and go, okay, is this a situation where I punishment? Or is this a situation where I let something go? We can't do one or the other. We've got to do both. I think it's an indicator of foolishness in our life when we're stuck. We always respond the same way. When somebody says something, we go, this is exactly what I think about this every time. Maybe not. Prayerfully consider and think and go to God and ask for wisdom. Talk to people in your life. Figure out, okay, every situation is a little different. And the way that I approach a situation needs to be different. So number two, don't be stuck in your ways. We need to follow Jesus. Number three, I think indicator of foolishness is when we're wise in our own eyes. This verse scared me when I read it, and I hope it scares you too, okay? It's super encouraging. Uh, This is Proverbs chapter 26, verse 12. There's more hope for fools than for people who think they're wise. You know, it's like we've been doing this, the whole chapter of 26 of Proverbs is the fool, the fool, the fool, the fool, and then it gets to this one and goes, even worse than a fool. This really dangerous thing we've been talking about all morning. Even worse than that is somebody who thinks they're wise, in their own eyes. Now, I think a lot of us would go, I don't think that's me, right? Like, I, I'm the first to admit, it's like, yeah, I don't have everything figured out, you know? I'm learning, I'm living life. I think this is so much more sneaky than we think it is. This temptation to feel wise in our own eyes. So I want us to bring it into sort of our context right here. As Christians, we're Jesus followers. What does this look like? I think a lot of us, and I've noticed this in myself time and time again in my life, where I feel like I know things. Like, I've, I've read Proverbs, you know. We did it a few years ago. We read every single verse, every single day, you know. I've read through that book. I've read the Gospels. You know, I've done some Bible studies. I've got some things figured out. And I feel like I know some things. I feel like I'm kind of knowledgeable about these things. I've got some wisdom. I've gone to church. I've been in small groups, right? I've figured some things out. And I think we get in a dangerous spot where we stop seeking. Yeah. We start just, okay, I feel like I know some things. And I go to church, I go to small group, I contribute, I, I, you know, I sing, I do all the things I'm supposed to do. But if I'm honest, I'm not seeking anymore. I'm not approaching my life with this student mentality of I don't know. And I need to seek wisdom. I need to seek Jesus. The Bible tells us to hunger and thirst. Those are strong words. I'm starving. I'm thirsty. I need wisdom. It is so dangerous when we get to a spot where we think we know we stop seeking. Even worse than a fool is somebody who thinks they're wise in their own eyes. And so all of this to say, these points, everything else, it's a big deal. And we live in a very challenging world. All sorts of different choices, Jacob or Edward. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) Jacob. I agree, you know. Anyway, Edward, okay. Well, we're divided. Okay, we need wisdom. Okay, anyway. But we live in a world that's complicated and there's choices. And we need to be aware that the wrong choice is dangerous. 
foolishness. Who we spend our time with, the thoughts we allow in our brain, and to think about ourselves, foolishness that starts to pop up in our own lives. This last year, this is my last thing, I'll, I'll close with this. This last year for me and my family has been a tough one. It's been weird. It's been awesome and it's been bad. It's been healthy, it's been unhealthy. It's been all these things. The, a, a challenging, hard year. And it's been a year that we did not do perfectly by any means. Did not do it perfectly. But it's been a year where we really quickly realized we need some wisdom. Like there are choices in front of us and we need to make the right one. We need wisdom. We need to think about this. We need to pray about this. We need to seek people in our life. It was so clear to us that we needed wisdom. It wasn't perfect, but we sought. We're gonna seek and try to find answers that we need in our life. And just speaking personally, this year, the thoughts has been just like all over the place. And I'm so thankful to God for my wife because there are so many days I came home from work just like a wreck mentally. It just it would come home and all these things and I would have, I said, I don't know how many times this year I said, I don't know if I'm supposed to do this anymore. Like, I don't know, maybe I'm supposed to do something else, a different job or work somewhere else or I don't know if this is the right thing. What if we got out of this? All this stuff and Sarah was able to just bring wisdom and go, no. Like those are the wrong thoughts. You're entertaining the wrong things. Hold those up. Let's look at them. Are they good? Are they right? No, they're not. You know, get them gone. It was so good. We talked last week. Lady wisdom. It's real. Okay, listen to your wives. You know what I'm saying? Yes, preach it. I got every, that's the biggest amen and clap I've got every service so far. So, listen. But I need wisdom. And what's so interesting, and I love this, like, we needed wisdom. Do you know who we called? We talked to family. We talked to wonderful people in our life. We called Josh. We called Ricky and Rachel. We called people here that are wise, that love us, that aren't just going to say what we want to hear, but are going to say good, right things. We want to make sure we are rooted into good people. It was so important and helpful for us. We plugged into good people. We sought wisdom. We prayed, and we feel like we're in a really good spot after a rough year. I think that's what wisdom does. And I think the temptation for foolishness was all over the place. To, from what I thought about, to who we were going to ask for advice, to what we were going to do. How should we do this? Should we do that? There was so much potential foolish people to talk to or foolish things to do. And I'm grateful that we were able to plug into some good people and make sure we were thinking about it the right way. And so my encouragement for all of us this morning, talking about the fool and foolishness, is to be very careful in our life. It's not something light or silly. Foolishness, consistently making bad decisions, it's not good. I think a lot of us, myself in this room included, we, we've made wrong choices in our life. And I think today can be a great day where you go, okay, I need to think about the people in my world who I let speak into me. I need to be careful. I need to think about the thoughts that I have. And then I need to notice through the lens of Scripture what is popping up in my life. Is it foolishness or is it righteousness? Which one? And if it's foolishness, I need to go to God and I need to do it now. Get it out of my life because it's important. It's, it's a big deal. So my prayer for us as we're about to pray is that the Holy Spirit would do what he does in our life and he would highlight things and he'd let things come to the surface, that we'd be people that are thinking about our inner life, our thoughts, who we are. Because I want to avoid foolishness in my life at all costs. And I want to seek and go after wisdom and what God wants for me. That's my prayer. So we'll pray together and then we're going to worship one more time. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your word. God, we thank you for your truth, for your wisdom. God, we thank you that you say that wisdom is calling out in the streets. That, that God, you give freely to anyone who asks for it. God, it's readily available to us, so help us to seek it and to ask. God, for those of us in this room that we really need to take inventory of people in our life, God, help us to do that. That's a hard thing. That's a challenging thing. We need wisdom on what to do and who to talk to. And, and, and God, all these things that are happening, God, we need wisdom. So help us, God, to do the right things, to make the right choices. God, help us with the thoughts in our own mind. Help us to think the right way. I think on good things. 
And God, when the wrong thoughts, the negative thoughts, the lies, whatever it is, God, when those come in, God, help us to hold them captive, to see them for what they are, and then to just give them right back. We need to think about things the right way. Help us to be people who are so in tune with who we are and what's happening in our own life that we can notice when foolishness is starting to sprout up in our own lives. And Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are a faithful, loving God who is able to come in and do incredible things in our life. And God, I love the truth of the gospel that all of us have fallen short, that all of us have foolishness, all of us have contributed into what's wrong in the world, but God, you love us and you have an escape plan for us, and so help us to grab onto that and seek after you. Help us to hunger and thirst for righteousness. We love you, and we just pray this in Jesus' name.